Hey guys, what's going on? This is Charles at Open Source Marketer, and this is my review of the Wacom Cintiq Companion Hybrid running Android 4.2.1. So let's get started. The Cintiq Companion comes in two flavors, the Windows 8 version and the Android version. Be sure to watch my review of the Windows 8 version for a look at that device. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Cintiq Companion Hybrid, or what I'll call the Hybrid Android device. Now, according to Wacom, the two devices are intended to meet the needs of different users and aren't just different versions of the same device. But from the outside, it's really hard to tell the two apart. The Android version looks almost exactly like the Windows version. I'll do a full comparison of the two devices side by side in another video, but for now, here's what you need to know about the hybrid Android device. It runs Android 4.2.1, which means you can run all your favorite Android apps. And it has a built-in battery that gets 10 hours of battery life, which is great for working remotely or just sitting on the couch. It also supports touch, so you can use your finger or the Pro Pen that comes with it for interacting with items on the screen. Unlike the companion Windows 8 device, you can use the hybrid Android device as a display tablet. It doesn't run Photoshop or other popular desktop apps directly as a standalone device like the Windows 8 device did, it's really either a standalone Android device or a cable connected display tablet for your laptop or desktop computer. So when you plug the device into the computer, it automatically switches from Android mode to display mode. And when you unplug the cable, it'll automatically switch from display tablet mode to Android mode. Long term, that should mean that you can use the device as a display tablet for as long as the hardware holds out. While the Android side of things might eventually become outdated as Android versions change, at least the display tablet functionality will always be there. I think this is pretty important to point out because the Windows 8 device doesn't work as an external display tablet when you hook to another computer. It's really meant to be a standalone device. So when the Windows 8 hardware and software becomes outdated, its usefulness will be severely limited. You could argue the same thing for the Android side of things, but at least with the external display capabilities, the whole device doesn't lose its functionality. So going back to the hybrid Android device, the device runs on battery or wall power in both configurations. So whether you have it connected to the computer or you have it as a standalone Android device, you can use it plugged in or not plugged in. And just like other Cintiqs, the hybrid Android device has programmable express keys and a programmable rocker ring. The device supports both left and right handed settings and you can turn the touch on or off depending on your needs. On the outside of the device, you have a power button, headphone jack, full USB port, Wacom cable connector port, micro USB port, micro SD slot, and power light. It also comes with a four position stand that attaches to the back of the device. The hybrid also comes with a very nice pro pen and protective case complete with replacement nibs. Wacom provides a very nice carry case that provides space for your device, cables, and pin case. In terms of software, Wacom does provide a few Android-based drawing apps. Their Infinite Canvas app is like Illustrator, and their Creative Canvas is similar to Photoshop. I've messed around with both apps, but the app that I use most in Android mode is Sketchbook Pro. I know I can start a sketch in Android mode and then finish it up in the desktop application when I'm connected to the Mac. The one thing that I did notice on the hybrid Android device is that I'm able to pinch and zoom in the desktop version of Photoshop, which I couldn't do on the Cintiq Companion Windows version. I don't know if that's because I was using a Windows version of Photoshop at the time and this is a Mac version, or if Adobe's added features to their Photoshop since I recorded the uh, review back in December. Either way, it really doesn't matter because touch works a whole lot better on the hybrid Android device than it did on the Windows 8 device. So really, overall, I'd say that the Cintiq Companion Hybrid or hybrid Android device, as I've been calling it, is the device that meets the usage needs for me. Some of you have said you need a standalone device that runs full desktop apps, and the hybrid isn't it. While you can do all the things on the hybrid that you could do on a traditional Cintiq 22 or 24 HD, the hybrid does need to be connected to the computer to act as a display tablet, just like other traditional Cintiqs. However, that said, the Android mode does provide some level of portability, and it really depends on your individual usage needs and workflow as to whether or not you'll like the hybrid. Personally, I chose to keep the hybrid and return the Windows 8 device because I like working directly in the Mac environment, at my desk, 
and then being able to sit on the couch and draw in Android mode. Sometimes I even bring my MacBook and hybrid into the living room so I can work in Photoshop on the couch. I do have to be cable connected to the MacBook Air, but both devices get about the same amount of battery life and take up about the same amount of physical space. So I just put the Air next to me and work on the hybrid in my lap. Again, depending on your environment and usage needs, this may not be the ideal setup for you. And finally, some viewers have asked why I need a hybrid when I have a Cintiq 22 HD on my desk. And really, the simple answer to that is that I like the screen real estate of the 22 HD, and everything is a lot smaller on the 13-inch screen of the hybrid. So it's nice to be able to do most of my work on the 22 HD, and then switch to the hybrid when I want to get away from my desk. So, there you have it. That's my review of the Cintiq Companion Hybrid. Like I said, I'll do a comparison of the Companion Windows 8 device and the Companion Hybrid Android device in a future video. And I'll also cover some of the software like Photoshop, Illustrator, and Flash as well. If you like this video, be sure to thumbs up. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe for updates and leave any questions that you have in the comments. See you next time. Thanks for watching.